Manhattan Radio. I'm Kevin Cerulli in Washington. And I'm Taylor Riggs in New York. And Kevin, we saw the news. New York opening up COVID vaccinations to anyone over the age of 30. My co-anchor in the afternoon, Romain Bostic, he has more on one organization that is helping New York City recover from that pandemic. Romain, take it away. Absolutely. Thank you, Taylor. And today, right now, we're joined by Victoria Bjorklund. She is the chair of the Robin Hood Foundation Relief Fund. Of course, this is a fund that was born out of the tragedy of 9-11 to help New Yorkers affected by that. It was activated again for Superstorm Sandy and now reactivated once again here for the COVID-19 pandemic. Victoria, it's been about a year since that reactivation. We've seen a lot of folks in need who needed that help. How much help have you provided to New Yorkers so far since the fund reactivated specifically for COVID-19? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this information, Romaine. Over the last 53 weeks, the Robin Hood Relief Fund has deployed $76 million in 930 relief grants across New York City's five boroughs through 625 frontline community partners. In fact, we believe we are the only citywide COVID relief fund still making grants, still accepting applications on our website from uh, charity community partners and still gratefully accepting contributions yeah. from thousands of donors. So when you say you're the only one left more or less, at least in terms of large organizations still doing this, what does that say about the need for this to continue? Is the need still there one year later? Absolutely. Are we at the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end? This is a health crisis which spawned an economic crisis. So many New Yorkers who work in the tourism sector, the hospitality sector, the restaurant sector are not back to work and can't get back to work soon. We have deployed over $37 million in emergency cash assistance to New York City residents who need the help because they don't have jobs now. When you talk about that cash assistance, those cash grants, are there a lot of strings attached to that? How does that money go out? The money goes out either through electronic fund transfers, if the poor families are banked, if they're unbanked, as so many families are, we are using preloaded debit cards that are available to be used we have gotten fees waived and they can be used as a network of ATM machines. We are getting real time feedback on how families are using those debit cards and they're predominantly using them for rent, food, medicine, school supplies. Hmm. So the need exists for these poor families. There are a lot of individuals, there are a lot of families out there in need. We've also seen that there are a lot of small businesses also in need. Businesses that for one reason or another weren't covered or weren't fully covered by some of the federal programs that we saw. We saw this with a lot of restaurants here. The lifeblood, of course, of many New York neighborhoods here. I'm wondering how much money gets out to some of those folks, the sort of the small cafe owners, the bodega owners, uh, the food cart owners. Well, we did a $2 million grant to food cart vendors, just to give you an example. We've worked with restaurants to repurpose them to be doing emergency food relief. And we've also made a grant to fund home uh, child care workers so that those women can get their businesses going and get the parents and the students back to school by taking care of their children. So we are funding small businesses as well. All right. So there's still a lot of need out there. There's still certainly pain. We have not fully recovered from the economic fallout of this crisis. But there's a lot of optimism out there right now, Victoria, about vaccinations, about uh, the, the, the lower rate of new COVID cases uh, relative to where we were a year ago here. When you look at our city here and you look at the need for recovery, how far along do you think we are? And when do you think we'll get back to anything resembling pre-pandemic activity? Well, my personal view is it's probably going to be another two years, but we at Robin Hood want to see this city build back better. So we do not have a rebuilding of the same defective structures that have left so many of our poor communities more sick and more economically deprived than they were before. So, I mean, you're a charitable fund. You're a fund, obviously, uh, bankrolled by 
just basically the benevolence of other folks here. When you talk about fulfilling these needs, the needs that the Robin Hood Relief Fund is fulfilling, is there a place for the government to maybe pick up uh, that baton going forward, government programs uh, that are in place and that can be relied on should a next crisis hit? Well, we definitely have a policy wing that works to share our data with governments so that they understand how poor neighborhoods and poor people in New York City are being affected. So, of course, we want to have a voice. But remember, as you noted, many of these families have not been eligible for any government funding. So we feel we have to work in partnership with government. For example, we made grants to the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation to fund in places they've never funded before. For example, we paid wages so that a COVID positive wage earner could isolate in a hotel, but the family could still eat. All right. Well, your organization obviously focused uh, primarily on New York City. We have a lot of viewers around the country, around the world. Any lessons here from what you've been able to do here in this city that could potentially be applied to other cities, other countries? We've tried to share our intelligence every week in a weekly funders call where we invite all the generous individuals, all the foundations, all the corporations like Barclays, who've been very generous to us to participate in our real-time learning, what we are mm -hmm. seeing and learning each week. And right. I think that's been very helpful. All right. Well, a lot of people have, of course, been helped. Victoria, thank you for your time. That's Victoria Bjorklund. She's chair of the Robin Hood Foundation Relief Fund. Kevin? Thanks, Herman. That was an incredibly important conversation. Catch him and Taylor later today uh, uh, all throughout Bloomberg Television. And coming up on Bloomberg Radio, Balance of Power continues in our second hour.